Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Adobe Live, and thank you so much for tuning in. I'm your host, Izzy, brand designer from Ottawa, Canada, and I am here with the very talented Taylor Pate. Taylor is an art director and illustrator based in LA, and we are so lucky to have you back again with us. How are you today? I'm doing great. I'm glad to be back. It's always fun to do these and, and share some tips, and just let's talk to the creative community. I'm I'm uh, I'm very excited to have you here. I'm so, like, I know what's in store, and you don't want to miss this. I want to say hi to everyone in the chat. Um, <laughs> pun intended. This live is going to be cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> please let us know where you are tuning in from. And quick reminder: if it's not already done, please make sure to follow the Adobe Live community on Instagram and on YouTube. And I know that we have a a crazy project today. So I'm just going to let you take the stage, Taylor. <laughs> well, um, it's it's definitely an honor. Uh, my name is Tyler Pate. I have been a graphic designer, art director, illustrator for, man, I was actually thinking about this yesterday. It's It's been, it's been over 11 years doing this. So it's, it's kind of crazy how it sneaks up on you. And, and honestly, it's, it's been fun the entire time. It's, it's got its roller coasters, but it's it's exciting. So I, I hope to share some of these tips with you. And um, you know, let's let's go ahead and just dive in and we could just have some fun from there. But uh if you if you don't know my work, uh follow the creative pain. That's where all my endeavors and, and creative outlets come to tuition. Um everything is is the same handle. But with that being said, what's cooler than being cool? I would say <laughs> ice cold, right? Yes. <laughs> let's keep the puns going. Um, all right, so this is what we're going to dive into. I, I was thinking about this uh, idea for a while, and and I'll just kind of give you some backstories on how I, I kind of come up with my ideas. Um, a lot of it's uh, digital references, you know, Instagram's always great, Dribble, Behance, and honestly, watching movies and cartoons and things like that, just take a screenshot, take a photo of whatever kind of inspiration you see, because you could always use that, and I'm constantly and I'll, I'll bring my sketchbook in here constantly traveling with a sketchbook i'm pen and paper all the way i i have an ipad to kind of doodle with but i kind of just like doing the, the piece of paper and pencil it's just feels feels nicer but um i actually was watching a, a netflix show a few months ago it was um i was like tyrone's a clone i don't know if you've heard of that it's got jamie fox in it Okay, Either I should way. check it out. Yeah. Has nothing to do with design, has nothing to do with illustrating. But there was this one scene where it had a um a drink cooler, and that's exactly what I took a picture of. It's this right here. It said cold drinks. And I immediately saw that. I was like, I love the way that type looks. I love how it it's like a 3D ice block. And I was like, that right there is something. Took a picture of it, hung on to it. And then when coming to creating this concept. I was like, ice cold, let's just run with that theme and then pull some references of things that I, I thought could be inspiring and, and give me a little bit of a challenge. Um, so I pulled these references here and then this was my actual sketch. So again, pencil, paper, pretty simple, uh, real rough with my, my concepts, especially for this early stage if it's a personal project. Um, just take a picture of it with my phone, drag it into the program, and I usually put it on its own layer. So you'll see that whenever I start an Illustrator project, I'll typically have like a background layer, which is my background to my artboard. That's just a solid color typically. And then I'll go into like my artwork and we can actually label these like that. And then there's a sketch layer, which I need to put this on there. It's right here. I'll drag it up to my sketch layer. I'll double click that layer and I'll usually put that to a dim just so that it's the lightest out of everything on the screen. And I'll lock that layer, drag it to the bottom just for reference. And then I'll start building everything on that. This is the intro from earlier, put that at the bottom actually. And then with this, again, it takes a little bit of time and it's a little bit of trial and error whenever you're trying to explore these different typographical treatments. and there's always a new kind of um, parameter. So for this, ice, water, melting, how do you get that transparency, getting the colors and everything right? And that's something that I, I wanted to really pull together and 
show you kind of that breakdown of how I get to where I, I got with this cold here. And we're going to illustrate the ice up top. So just diving in, I found a font that I like most. I went ahead and found this. Uh, so this is bold line, semi-rounded. It used, it used the letter forms that I liked. Uh, I wanted something a little more blocky, a little bit more of like, again, we're, we're trying to get something similar mm -hmm. to this sketch here. Like and, an ice cube vibe, I guess. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like trying to figure out what's the best dimension we could get with a, with a, a font, because a lot of times if we pick the wrong font and we're getting there to illustrating, we're going to realize there's way too many troubles. Um, that's, it's not going to really look like what we want. So. I wanted to go something with that resembled what I, I sketched here. So what I did next, I'll put this back over here, was I got the stack that I wanted to fit a good ratio so that the ice is larger than the cold. I'll align this a little bit. Again, this is all just pre-planning before we get into the perspective, because we're going to dive into a little bit of perspective. We're going to dive into a little bit of color theory. Um, and if you, if you follow my work or if you've seen my other streams, I'm a huge fan of the pen tool. I live, breathe the pen tool. Um, it's just, I feel like there's more control with it. Yep. I agree. What about you? Do, you? do you like the pen tool? Oh my gosh. Yes. Pen tool yeah. is my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's something about it. I mean, a lot of people is like, oh, I'll use the brush or, or use um, the blob tool, things like that. But I don't know. I just the pen tool seems like I have more control. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to offset my path. I outlined my font. So, you know, precursor, if you're going to make edits, we're now at the point of no changing the type. Uh, we're now getting in customization all the way. So I'm going to go ahead and offset my path. I'm trying to find something that's pretty close to the edge there. Something like that. And then you'll see what I did over to the left. I am kind of building those different color layers that we'll then start um, adjusting and creating some depth to it. Mm -hmm. So let's see. I did these. And it helps to kind of pre-think the color theory too. Um, again, we're going to get into something really fun at the, towards the end of this, which is uh, the the AI generative recoloring, which is really cool. And it'll show you some different options to to push your your colors a little more. All right, so this is exactly what we had to the left here. And that's how I started building this out down below. But I'm just going to try to catch us up to where I am down here by now bringing this to an artboard. And I'm going to jump back and forth between what I've already done and then catching you up. It's kind of insane to just see how it started too and to mm -hmm. how it's looking now. Like there's so much going on and... Um... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about your process because this is giving life to type. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really is. And and I always like to, to put a disclaimer. It just takes a lot of time and patience. If, if you can keep your cool, another pun, uh -huh. we can, um, <laughs> this is going to get so cheesy. We could literally uh, really create anything. Because uh, if you start getting frustrated or, or just lose your cool, then you're going to, you're going to get distracted. You're going to want to try something else or, or you might just quit. And that's always avoid that. That's my rule of thumb right there. It's like take a break if you're feeling a little too frustrated because you're not going to you're not going to do the work you enjoy. Uh, and what I'm doing right now is I'm about to create my own perspective. There's a couple ways you could use the uh, perspective grids. You could use some some other existing things like an isometric grid for something like this. But a lot of times with my illustrations, I like to kind of build my own perspective, build my own dimension um, because I want it to kind of live in a world that, you know, I can completely control and it's not tied too much to a, a particular type of grid. Uh, but what we're going to do is create our own. So I am using the transformation tool and I'm just skewing my type until 
I get it in a position that looks right. Again, this is going to be the top of that that type. So if we're thinking about those ice cubes and what you see here that says cold, that's going to be the top layer. And that's what we're going to start building from there down into perspective. So I like to kind of build my, my angles. And it's okay if we distort the type a little bit because we want mm -hmm. to build those angles. And once we get that to a point we want, I'm just going to click and I hold option. I use a lot of key commands. Hopefully you could see those down at the bottom and I'm yes, going to just can. drag, drag my type down a little bit to a point where I have the depth that I want. And it's, it helps to see like this to the left, right? So we can kind of see exactly where we're going. I'm just going to change this to a solid color. And I can turn my background color off just so I can see exactly what I'm doing. And then from here, what we're going to do is build out this actual type. I'm going to group my letters together. I'm ungrouping everything because whenever you start playing with these um, outline fonts, it groups all your letters together. So if you just mm -hmm. you know, get to a point where you can ungroup everything and then regroup so that we have individual letters like this. That makes a lot of sense. I just want to acknowledge the chat because the puns yeah. are like already rolling <laughs> in the chat. <laughs> What's so the best we, one? Um, so here by uh, Uma Karn saying, with you, anything is popsicle, which I love. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a lot of them. So you're as cold as ice. I got chills. <laughs> Icy hot, freeze. Um, ice queen selling ice to Eskimos. <laughs> um <laughs> you're on thin ice um <laughs> so yeah nice yeah we're we're getting there already and it's <laughs> we're like 10 minutes in so <laughs> uh we we knew what we were signing up for with with the theme and everything else all right oh, it's okay um, all right so i'm going to now turn on my my guides here and what that's going to help me do is kind of click into place and I, there, I know there's a few different ways we can create perspective, but for the sake of this type of project, I'm just going to build build my own here by creating some extruded type. And I'm just using the pen tool and lining up my points. See, there's a stroke on this. I want to eliminate that for now. So you mentioned that you're, you've been doing this for 11 years. So mm -hmm. like you seem very at ease with what you're doing right now. So I guess like there's definitely some uh, <laughs> expertise <laughs> that's coming in, like even for your perspective and how you mm -hmm. put everything down. So to someone who is starting um, and is unsure, what, what would you tell them? Well, I, I like to first explain, I guess, like why do I try to attempt perspective this way because we, there's um there's ways to do it with like the 3d tool there's mm -hmm. ways to do it with uh, the blend modes so you can repeat that graphic all the way through between two points or two graphics um and what i've found is whenever you get into illustrating essentially anything in vector to a degree where there is a ton of details and a ton of shapes think about each shape has points those little nodes are data and the more that you have in a file, the slower that file gets. So I always like to, to eliminate that process of slowing my file down by doing things like the 3D tool and then doing things like the, the blended tool because sometimes that creates a lot of excess points and a lot of shapes that it just gets hard to see. And I do outline mode a lot. So if you ever do command Y, you can kind of see exactly what your shapes are even if they're overlapping and underlapping. So this is this is the cold as ice right here. You could see that it, it starts getting pretty complex after a while. Mm -hmm. And if I can eliminate the majority of those points so that I can see what I'm doing, then um, we're, we're golden because it's going to go smooth from there on. All right, so I'm just building this perspective. And what I'm doing is I'm connecting the shape that I duplicated and dragged at the bottom with this new shape. 
So why am I picking those certain areas? Um, you know, it's, it's just lining up a point that is on the very tip of this radius, right? It's on the very out point of that radius. And that's where that first point should go. And then I have to do the exact same thing with this bottom duplicated shape. So it's the very furthest point of that shape. And usually it clicks into place where an intersection happens. And it should be a straight line. It should be a straight line. And that right there starts to develop the, um, the perspective that we're going to repeat throughout our whole process because we just de uh, designed essentially what is our side, right? So this is the mm -hmm. same angle that has to be repeated everywhere. Same for this, this other side. So it's, it's a lot of repetitive process, to be honest. Um, I'm just lining up these points. But once you have one, then the mm -hmm. work goes a little faster. So it's yeah. like finicky at the beginning, but then like exactly. smoother process after. Yeah, because we're just building that that guide. And I'm going to do the inside of the C. Sometimes I have to watch out because it could get tricky with what I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. So... I love the outline mode for that and hate mm -hmm. it at the, <laughs> at the same reason. <laughs> it's, it is something. Um, sometimes it, I won't, I'm not going to do it for this process, but sometimes I'll like, let's say for instance, the C, I would put that on, on its own layer and then turn off everything else. So I can only see that one shape uh, mm -hmm. when I go in outline mode. So that, that also is a easy way to. Oh my goodness. So we, so the the puns are still rolling and we have a really <laughs> a really good one here from a reverb saying uh well I think it's a conversation but Wade saying well only for the right freeze lancer so I guess <laughs> <laughs> That's a good uh, one. <laughs> that is a good one. We do have a few in store like for for you too dear dear viewers and and, and chat people. <laughs> Maybe yeah, it's, it's time for a, a first one for like, um, <laughs> so right now everything is smooth hailing. Uh, <laughs> I wonder how many we can get over the course of an hour. <laughs> oh, <it's laughs> probably a count? lot. Oh, <laughs> Wade, you're, you're a chat moderator today. <laughs> can you keep count? <laughs> that would be really funny if we get, get to what? 47 minimum. 47. Yeah, that that's our target. target a random 47. number. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's uh, no pressure, but viewers uh, challenge accepted. Well, we're all, probably already at twenty from the chat, so <laughs> <laughs> that's, it's a Perfect. pretty decent goal. Awesome. Uh, all right, so I'm I'm about to switch gears, but you kind of see what I'm doing, right? Like we're we're just building building this dimension, and I'm gonna do this for each shape. So that we have we have a letter that is starting to build perspective and 3d um pretty simple outline mode that's that's all we have there so without just repeating the cold i, I do want to try to finish the ice up here so i'm going to jump back to the original one i created already again it's the same exact process uh, what i did with the cold is exactly what we were doing over here to the right so jumping back, one thing to notice is um, whenever you're doing that first process of distorting with the transformation tool, uh, I tend to try to have a couple shapes in that first skew or two, right? So I'll, I'll have my type and you'll see I'll sometimes put a circle or a square and group the type and those shapes together. Because once you start skewing it, that's going to put everything into that one perspective, which is that top layer. Smart. And, and that's kind of our grab bag. We're going to constantly pull those shapes. Like if there's anything that's going to be circular, I've got that circle that's in that perspective. We're going to pull from it and duplicate it. Um, so if there's ever a point where no matter what you're illustrating or creating, uh, copy, duplicate, always never build off of your, your actual asset because you, you might need to go back and reference it. 
right. and this is so... the experience talking this is like <laughs> take take note people like this this was like a, a golden nugget right there i know like how many times have uh have you edited anything on the final final and then realize you can't go back and then you have to go back and you have to recreate it and then it's I mean, never the exact it's tough yeah more time than i want to admit <laughs> <laughs> well i i will say it, it's happened to me enough to where i finally learned my lesson but i mean it still happens sometimes where i'm like oh dang it i forgot to to save as or mm -hmm. or pull some different references or most of the time too it's because you have a tight deadline and you're just trying to get it done mm -hmm. and you're such that like, you're in a groove then that you yeah. forget your good habits but that's when you need your good habits the most yep that's that's exactly it um because i think one thing i've learned from from actual design work and and i've done i've done quite a bit now thinking back on it from working with an agency to to working freelance full time to to working with studios um they're all different when it comes to timelines and and really how mm -hmm. do you get it done in the amount of time you have and a lot of times that's where you, the experience kind of comes in and you start playing those different um scenarios where it's like oh i've seen this before because xyz and then you're going to realize that all right i'm going to have to carve out some more time to do this and then less time to do something else because it's at the end of the day it's it's work it can be work and and there's companies and businesses and time and budget all on on the line so you gotta that's it work smart so now you're adding some uh zigzags like you're smoothing mm -hmm. out your zigzag line to give it that on yes. like uh I don't know how to call that like an ice because ice is it's, technically flush but <laughs> it's it's something that i i wanted and i'll back out real quick and and show you um some of my references like this is like a little random piece of clip art i found and i was like you know what i, I want something that's smooth like it's melting mm -hmm. and there's a lot of imperfections so you know the quickest way of doing that is to zigzag and then smooth it and then we're going to outline it and then go in there and actually adjust it manually. But that gets us kind of the foundation. And I think this is a good reference. I always mm -hmm. suggest that um, kind of pull some references, pull some mood boards, pull all these these different resources. Um, I, I sometimes don't stress it enough, but everything that I create starts from an idea. It's never just diving in and seeing what happens. Um, there's usually some structure there. Isn't it uh, also better to draw from something that you're looking at instead of memory? Because then you can recreate more details mm -hmm. in that sense as well. Yeah, because there, there's sometimes, uh, especially with type, where it, it doesn't exist. You know, I, I've created type before that, for instance, this is something I've never done, which is out of ice. And you Google it and you realize, all right, ice type. There's not very many references there. So mm -hmm. you have to kind of uh block in those different reference materials to have it make sense um i've even done type before that that was made out of pickles like sliced pickles so you have oh to, my gosh you know like, where do you pull that from but lots of images of pickles and then figuring out letter forms so you can you know figure out how to, to box those two together have uh, you ever like like let's say for that pickle type would you mm. go to the store and like get a jar of pickles and actually lay out like some pickle slice like <laughs> in in like the shape of a letter mm. just as reference would you do that too or you tend to go with images instead uh it it depends there's been times if there's anything like referencing uh poses like with people or figures yes i'll for sure go and take a picture of me doing this or doing that and then that's <laughs> my that's my reference right uh but with the pickles there's there's so many images online and adobe stock to where it's like that's what i'm that's what i'm going after i can use that i know that sliced pickles are going to have these ridges and squiggles here on the sides and the edges so i i can kind of wrap my head around it it's i guess that's kind of the uh, the research um mm -hmm. but if it got to a point where it's like i don't know what this pickle looks like from this angle and i can't find it yeah, I'm going to yes. go and buy a jar of pickles. Right. 
that makes a lot of sense but a um, lot of sense <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but that that's kind of how it's case by case um because here's here's why i'm like hesitant to say every time do it that way is because it gets back to our earlier conversation of of time how much mm -hmm. time how much budget do we have and sometimes there isn't time to just run to the store there isn't time to you know jump and find that inspiration it, it's like oh, we got to figure it out now and I've, I've i work on a lot of deadlines that are like that so it's it could be tricky but you know you find what works project for project but definitely definitely do your research <laughs> Yeah, time is uh, a very like important resource. Mm -hmm. it, um, it really is. I personally think time is more important than money in in, in my life. Mm -hmm. at, yeah, um, I mean, money's important. I'm not saying it's not, <laughs> but <laughs> um, I'll, I'll take yeah. the extra if you have it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't trust me. <laughs> no, I, I I know what you mean. It it is it is. Um, you know, it's also that whole, the saying of time is, time is, uh, what is it? Health is wealth, right? Because mm -hmm. if you're mm -hmm. healthy and you can live longer, then you have more opportunities to, to do whatever you need to do. Um, That's it. Or sometimes you work hard to allow yourself to have the time mm -hmm. to do the things that you really want to. So it's like finding that balance is, uh, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. I don't want to get into a major philosophical <laughs> link. <laughs> conversation because um i mean the puns are still rolling in the in the yeah. in the chat but we have wade here who made a pun for your pickle type uh oh, what saying, we got? said pickle type that must have taken sours of work <laughs> <laughs> well here's the deal to the pickle uh it it took a long time <laughs> there you it go took, it, it really did um and it 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 takes a lot of trial and error. I mean, even what I'm doing right here, there's no, there's no guarantee that it's gonna work. That's that gets back to what I was saying with um, keeping it cool, and I really do mean it. Like no puns. <laughs> like you, <laughs> you have to, you have to keep it cool because, I mean, my earlier days, if I attempted something and I couldn't figure it out or if it looked bad, I would just like ah oh, get so frustrated. I'd keep working at it, working at it, and it's like, oh, but I don't ever get anything done. And, and then I usually quit. And that's, that was the biggest moment for me, or it's like when it became a profession and I was like, all right, you have to figure this out. Um, there, there is no giving up on it because you have people relying on you. And oh, that's it. Mm -hmm. So now you're like roughing up the edges. Mm -hmm. So again, so it's like that melted texture that you're exactly. going for. Exactly. And it's something I just did that I, I do quite a bit, which I will use the shape builder tool to like merge all my shapes whenever I'm making those initial um, angles. And whenever I merge them, I usually get one solid shape and I'll grab that shape. Don't move it, but click on it, copy, and then command Z back to where I originally was about to do the shape builder tool. And I'll eliminate those lines and then I'll do copy paste in place. So oh. why I do that is the shape builder tool will eliminate this bottom shape if I technically left it the way it was. So I would have lost this if I used mm. the shape builder tool and then kept going forward. But by going back and then copying and pasting, I now have a custom shape and I still have that bottom shape. So Got I it. always like to have those artifacts so that let's say I need that base layer of that shape, I still got it. So that's, if, if that makes sense, it, it made more sense for me whenever I, I was in practice doing it over and over. And I realized there was opportunities where I didn't have the original shape and I was completely out of luck. Um, but that helps me. It, it keeps your file nice and tidy mm -hmm. as well in, in that sense. Because personally, I just copy everything and put like, bring it outside the artboard. And it's yeah. like this beautiful mess at the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get it. it. It is trial and error. I'm telling you. All right. So I am going to start pulling from 
my color scheme that I've already generated. So let's see what we're doing here. We're gonna, I'm gonna round this because I don't really want any hard edges or points because I want it again to feel a little melted. Vex, let's see, zigzag. Add a little bit of a curve to it. Too much. And while you do this, we do have a question from Carol in the chat and asking, does Tyler ever use the smooth in parentheses as ice <laughs> tool for those <laughs> corners? Uh, actually, no, I, I, I'm i not completely familiar. I, I think it it eliminates points, right? Yes. Have you have you used it? Yes. Uh, sometimes when whenever because sometimes I like to just build and just kind of mm -hmm. let my like pen tool go wild and then I'll like smooth it out after. Um, that's when I'm more in the like, exploration mode, not when mm -hmm. I'm on a tight deadline. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's nice. It, or it's nice sometimes too when. Like let's say I'm I'm merging shapes with the clipping and uh, not the clipping max but the um um, um, um pathfinder <laughs> yeah like uh, yeah whoa that was uh, I I need I need to have another coffee people I'm so sorry <laughs> but that like helps to eliminate um like anchors so just mm -hmm. like it's smoother too specifically uh, before delivering to the client. Um, just to yeah. make sure that it's just the proper anchors that are there. Yeah, that that makes complete sense. Because um, again, it, that file management is is so key, and and especially mm -hmm. when it gets down to uh, presenting to clients or handing over those assets, um, you you want to make sure you you give them what they need, but also that they could use it, and then on top of that. Is it confusing? Because if if the, the client or the end user is confused and can't use what you have, then you know what's what's the point, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I found that to be the a constant thing to <laughs> think about because you know it, it's easy to get into weeds with technical files and it's like oh, but this is really cool because you know it's a vector and then you have someone's like well what is a vector and it's like oh <laughs> oh <laughs> i guess you don't need a vector because you don't have the file or the program so here's a png you know what i mean <laughs> that's exactly it. I'll, I'll send the eps because uh, eps can be used on powerpoint presentation mm. or um like so the eps is always a good one to send to, to clients mm -hmm. and they can also like manipulate a little bit yeah um, but yeah, usually I'll send everything, but I tell them like it's it's in my brand style guide. Yeah. Like the AI file, just don't touch it unless you're giving it away to another designer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, so what's the the majority of uh, of your work? It's branding, right? So yes, yeah. That's so a brand. lot of those assets has to be usable, and mm -hmm. logo variations probably you know out like seven to eight different files of the same thing you know yeah different it's... colors mm -hmm. um i'm working on a very uh cool one at the moment where i'm i'm designing a mascot as part of the like oh, cool. brand identity and uh so we have a main mascot um uh -huh. which is going to be the face of the brand but we okay. also are like developing um like a series of characters so each of the business owners because it's like a family owned uh like mm -hmm. gl gluten-free vegan um like sweets like sweet treat okay. uh, company um but they all want their own avatar um uh, so 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 they can wear that on their apron and i see they, they all have a different uh ethnicity as well so that's going to mm -hmm. represent the line of goodies that they put out because it's nice. going to be tinted with their um yeah culture which i'm so excited about yeah yeah that's awesome mm-hmm Mascot design though is something else. <laughs> yeah, it it is its own thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, it, it's I mean it's like when you meet illustrators, like true illustrators, and um, you talk to them about design and things like that, and you realize that there's this niche of making mascots or, or honestly making 
illustrations that go into a logo system. I mean, there's like different That's skill it. sets there because, you know, I know, I know plenty of really, really technical logo makers and their work is, is like a spaceship, you know, but when it comes down to like, oh, I want something a little more illustrated. It's like, oh, that's not the wheelhouse. You know, yeah, I can't. Yeah, that's it. That's mm -hmm. that's why it's important for the clients to shop for their mm -hmm. um, designers before finding that right style. And it's Absolutely. also important to showcase the work that you want to attract and that you know you can do well on your portfolio. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is. It takes it gets back to research. You know, I. <laughs> I, I thought, you know, after school, you know, the, the the research phase of things like that, you know, oh, it would be gradually, I'm just all in design, like, that's all I have to worry about. And then getting into the field and realizing, oh, I mean, it's everything. If you have a, uh, a client who, who's, you know, starting a bio lab, or, or something weird or like, uh, you know, they grow plants. It's like, you got to research that stuff. You got to understand, yep. you know, why your graphics you're creating makes sense for, you know, somebody who's uh, growing plants. Mm -hmm. It has to have meaning and mm -hmm. like, yeah, not just, not just a, a first read, like yeah, yeah, a second it, it read, just, like a, yeah. It just can't look pretty. <laughs> yeah. That's it. <laughs> That's what so, I always, yeah. Yeah, sorry. I didn't. So I just want to. So now you're adding other pieces, like you're mm -hmm. like you're copying and then reshaping to add yeah. some depth and uh, kind of reflection, I guess. To yeah, that's exactly it. So I'm kind of doing a bunch of offset paths, um, creating some new shapes, and creating these different sort of layers in this. You see how there's like my darkest, lightest, darkest because. It, this is the challenge that I, I, I guess I kind of seeked out for this uh, ice type is how do you make it look more translucent? How do you make it look like it's kind of see-through, but yet we know it's not see-through and it's not just opacities. I want to make those shapes and I want to make those colors exactly what they need to be, um, which is, uh, you know, probably overkill, <laughs> but it's it's fun. I don't know. I, I find this part kind of fun. Um, making something exist that didn't exist before i think for a 90 minute live you definitely uh like aimed high <laughs> <laughs> i know how are we on time <laughs> actually yeah that was my assist so we are 37 minutes in okay so you're, you're good all right so i'm yeah. going to ramp this up but yeah let's let's definitely chat about like um process is there any sort of questions in the chat um about design process or how's everyone doing so we're still on the ice <laughs> puns <laughs> um okay. everyone's telling me to go get an iced coffee because of my okay. comment earlier uh, uh -huh. or a cold brew um let me check yeah if you if you have any uh questions about uh tyler's process please like He's uh, giving so many golden nuggets uh, to this. Um, so you work at Nickelodeon during mm -hmm. the day. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about that? Uh, so I, I'm a part of the consumer products team, which is a really exciting uh, job to have, actually, because we get to create and develop all of the uh, consumer products for, for Nickelodeon. So wow. anything from toys to bed sheets to, uh, man, a, a thermos, it could be anything, a toothbrush. It, it's, it's all those different assets we, we help create and develop. And then it gets put in stores, uh, for all the, for me, it's, it's big kid franchises. So it's like SpongeBob, Ninja Turtles, like all the great fun things that I grew up with. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's been quite, quite the job. What is the craziest design that you had to do for a product? Craziest design? Yeah. Uh, well, I will say this. A lot of the work typically has to fall underneath uh, guide, guide principles or, or IP principles. So there's there's always rules to follow, such as, you know, we wouldn't do that for SpongeBob or we wouldn't do that for mm. XYZ or we have to target 
the graphics we're making for certain age groups. That makes sense, um, yes. But I think the where it gets pretty wild and interesting is is the timelines. That gets back to what we were saying earlier. You start to hone in those abilities to like, oh, I've got, you know, one hour block. This is all I can do for one hour. And then I got to jump to something else, um, which is which is part of it. You know, you, you have those fast turnarounds. Um, but it, it's definitely exciting. A lot of the stuff that I do there, you, you don't get to see it until a year or two years later. <laughs> So that's, oh, that's wow. the biggest thing because we have to create it so far ahead and we can't share it because of NDAs. So that's why I don't really post much of it because um, I can't. <laughs> can't yet until it's out. When it's released, it. then you can. Yeah. So And yeah, you can't talk about it either because you're under NDA most of the exactly. time. Exactly. Yeah. So all the projects are exciting, <laughs> but that's about all I can really talk about um <laughs> no <yeah>. it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> there's That's maybe something happens. crazy in the works right now who knows <laughs> yeah i will say that um the new ninja turtle movie that a lot of the products and toys and things like that went through our team which is pretty exciting oh that yeah. is super exciting are you a um ninja like turtle sorry the ninja, ninja turtle <laughs> <laughs> I'm not teenage... a fan of so yeah. Sorry, oh, no. teenage ninja turtle. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Come on, come on. You gotta. I'm sorry. Gotta yeah, know. I... I know what um, they are, but I've never watched it. I also grew up with French TV, so uh, oh. everything would get uh, translated a lot later. <laughs> so... I bet that's interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like a whole different world because I know growing up in in the '90s with television and everything like that would cartoons is crazy they would advertise all kinds of stuff oh yes but yeah. looking back on it i'm like how is that a toy <laughs> yeah that that is so true yeah my references for uh um uh what i used to watch are complete first of all like because like there is like i would watch tv from the even though i live in ontario i would watch mm -hmm. what is done in the in quebec which okay. has its own culture in itself um, yeah. So whenever I talk to people, they have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel alienated a little bit for that. We do have a question from Wade uh, asking, Tyler, do you ever do any traditional or have any desire to work traditionally? If so, what would be your medium of choice? Uh, by traditional, like drawing, painting and sculpting. Um, I'm assuming that, right? Uh, Wade, uh, if you can confirm. But let's let's go with that. Yeah. I, oh, absolutely. Um, th if there's anything I want to bring into the universe of future projects is I'd love to do an art show. I, I would love to oh. create a um, a complete, completely branded, cohesive like vision of, of a palette of work. And and I've been slowly creating and, and building everything under the creative pain for that one reason. So that's that dates back because I've I've been doing these series for uh, I don't know since before 2017 I've been creating these illustrations and if you ever dig through my work you'll see some of them and it's just like these mock brands of like spoofing different things that we all know like it could be a Heinz ketchup bottle but it's like the creative sauce and it's like all mm -hmm. these different puns and things like that I I want to create this whole universe of what designers see when they see things like a ketchup bottle it's not just food it's there's branding there's an idea behind it there's this concept there's inspiration from it so i wanted to illustrate this series to where the inspiration is is evident and it's it's right there in front of you and it says it um so i've been building that and there's a lot of things like sculptures like making those illustrations into actual sculptures i want to do uh, and then making them in paintings. So I, I do dabble in painting with acrylics and uh, paint pens. So that's, I don't wow. share as, that much about it, but yeah, that's, that's happening in the background. I'm just, I'm too close to it now. I just want to make sure it's finished before I announce anything. <laughs> <laughs> I totally get that. And, and how do you manage it all? Because you do so much. Uh, well, it, this is 
this is kind of how I treat a hobby, you know, like some people have a hobby or time away from the screen. I'm, I'm just kind of jumping back and forth. I'm, I'll be on the computer all day. And then at night I'll jump to a sketchbook, make some ideas. Mm. And then I'll, um, jump on the weekends and start fleshing those ideas out. Um, and just seeing where I could take it. So it, it gets back to time management. I mean, the weekends is where I get a lot of this stuff done. Just have to know like, all right, I don't have anything going on this weekend. So I'm going to spend a few hours illustrating. That's good because sometimes like personally on the weekends, I'm like, I need to replenish on creativity so mm -hmm. I'm, I, or don't, don't look at a screen at all. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I get that way too. Like, believe me. Uh, burnout is a thing, uh, even even if it's your full time job. I mean, it's a thing. It is. It's a. Uh, it's tough. Um. <laughs> so another pun because I want to go back to what you're working <laughs> yeah. on. But I see what you did here. I see. <laughs> <laughs> um. I liked what you did with the. You used a brush tool on the eye just for like that mm -hmm. little kind of little line. Um, highlight mm -hmm. yeah like, that was so um, like beautifully done thank you yeah that well for anyone who loves the blob tool that was done with the blob tool um i get so many questions about using the pen tool so much you're like well, what about this or that and it's like i use it whenever i you know have an opportunity but i predominantly stick to uh I just stick to the pen tool, but the blob tool is nice because it gives you that nice flow, especially if you use a stylus. By the way, I, I'm I'm using a Wacom Cintiq. So if you have any sort of stylus or, or a pressure point pen, you can get that variant by just pressing harder and, and softer um, to give you this, this kind of warpy wave look. Can you give us a quick example if you have the chance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right, I'm going to do the blob tool. And I'm gonna I'm lightly pressing and I'll press harder. See how it there you go. It does everything based off of how hard I'm pressing on my stylus. So that that's perfect to get those imperfections and and like even for these circles, like I don't want a perfect circle. I want something mm -hmm. that that feels a little more organic and and different than a straight line. So that that's definitely where that comes yeah. into play. It's like it adds so much dimension. It, it's it's mm -hmm. crazy how just one little single stroke can <laughs> yeah. just change the whole vibe of a design. Oh, um, it, for sure. Yeah. So we are forty. Uh, sorry, it's forty-seven minutes in. Okay. Just so you have a, a time check. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So how much time is? How much do we have left? So we have 15? like thirty-five minutes. Okay. Like, yeah. All right. That's. It's fine. I'm going to start bulking some of these graphics together. I don't like how wavy this one is. So this is where I have to go in there, change it manually. Uh, we have the artist caps here saying for everyone hey. watching. Oh, so is a friend <laughs> of yours? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, they're saying for everyone watching uh, this, Taylor is such an amazing, uh, is such an amazing artist, a lot of talent. It's an honor and pleasure to work alongside this man. Nah, he's he's being too modest. He's 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 incredible. Caps is awesome. Um, fellow designer. Um, definitely have to check out his work. Um, but it takes time. I mean, this is just try to keep you cool. Pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Caps. I'll see. You. I'll see you later today. I'm heading to the office afterwards. Such a hard worker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Why is that not going? There we go. That's because you're on, yeah, uh, like streaming. Like you you do these like so many times, then you do it while you're streaming. It's like, why is it not working? It was working like oh like man last night. <laughs> I think during one of my last streams, I I was um 
trying to figure out what was I trying to do? It was something to do with like the file formatting, um, with changing like the color, like the, I can't even remember what it was. Either way, it was, it was one of those where I knew if I did it wrong, it would close my entire project because I was Oof. trying to, I only remember the key command and I wasn't fully sure if it was the right key command. So I didn't want to just mess up and then everything closes. So I was like fumbling up top, like looking for this thing. And I was like, ah, it's somewhere up here. And I couldn't ever find it. I was like, all right, it's <laughs> TBD. It happens but, to the best of us. I don't know. I'll just get a, just a, a mental block sometimes. And I was like, I can't think of how to do this, even though I do it all the time. <laughs> well, I mean, I just had a blank for Pathfinder. So. <laughs> yeah. And I do, I do these pretty often. Uh -huh. so. See, <laughs> happens you know exactly to the best of us. Talking about <laughs> exactly, <laughs> but the Adobe Live community is so chill. Like you're all like, excuse, it's all good. <laughs> Unacceptable. Oh no no, like <laughs> it's already forgotten. All right, so I am speeding through this path, offset path. that's it i guess there's a lot of exploration with the first letter just to make sure that you're mm -hmm. getting like that right look and feel um like i see in the cold at the bottom you added some like lines to add like that uh you can see that shape of like mm -hmm. like melting <laughs> on top yeah it, it, that's that's kind of where it takes a little finesse and trial and error because again each letter is slightly different um, and you have to kind of work with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's like letters I find that are harder to work with than others. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like a, a G. <laughs> uh, is, is that the, is that the hard one? Well, I mean, I find it's, it, it depends. It depends. Like for yeah. logos, a G could be cool because you can like hook it to something else. But like mm. I would imagine for this specifically, that probably would be a lot of detail. Well, I mean, that C depends, depends on the, on the font, I guess. Yeah, that, it, that definitely is. I mean, there's, there's always some curveball that I'm having to figure out where it's like, I don't. I don't know off the top of my head, so I have to spend however much time I can to figure it out. That this just gets back to keeping, you know, keeping the the process moving straight, and like you got to trust that process because, um, it's it's not always easy. You know, I, I think that's a big misconception with with what we do. Um, oh, it's always fun, or oh, it's all you do is draw. You know, and it's like, oh well, yeah, kind of, but you know there's a lot to it like going back to some of our earlier conversations about process and research mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know that that stuff takes a lot of time and that's the easiest way that i've uh discussed with any artist or, or someone who's thinking about getting in this field that's the easiest um uh deciding factor because it's when it's your job you you have to perform and you have to figure it out and you have to keep with it um, you know, that, that's the biggest, you know, life lesson I've had with my, my journey. It's like, you got to stick to it and you can't, you can't just give up. Mm -hmm. It's not just a, a school project, you know, people, people are relying on you. Then yeah, the, that's mm -hmm. exactly it. We have Alessandra here saying for me, it's the letter S for some reason. So that's like, <laughs> like, yeah, the bad yeah. letter. The mad letter. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the mad hatter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, that, that would be funny. That might be a funny pun for someone to illustrate. <laughs> yes. Get that idea. Get some, uh, well, uh, trademark it. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. It'll be trademarked by the time we get off the stream. <laughs> exactly. I won't even get to it. Oh. <laughs> what can you do? Oh, it's okay. <laughs> 
Sometimes I'm like, if if other people can make um, money off of my ideas, I mean, I can't, so they can do yeah. it. <laughs> if they can, by all means, go ahead. <laughs> and I, I, you know, when I get to a, a interesting topic, I think I, I get this realization a lot. Whereas people taking your work or, or you know, oh, that's tracing or oh, that's this and that. that that's a hot topic, I think, in in the design world. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, the simple answer, depending on what they're talking about exactly, it's, you know, well, you can do it, you do it, you know, like if, if you want to, you know, create exactly what I did, that's fine. But, you know, it's still my idea. It's fine. Um, everything's based off of, um, it's compound, you know, it's ideas off of other ideas, but you have to make it your own. That's the truth. That, yeah. Add your own spin to it. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's not necessarily traceable. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of things have reference. It's just part of that early process that we were talking earlier. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you can say, too, you know, oh, I did did this based on like so and so's work, which really inspires me. And mm -hmm. and when you when you're crediting the artist, then I think that's OK if it's a little more similar because you're acknowledging yeah. the research and time that went into the first iteration of that design. Exactly. This is looking pretty good. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's starting to shape up and you know, it gets hopefully easier when you, you start diving into some of these letters and it's like, oh, okay, it's just repeating that process that might take 30 minutes <laughs> over and over and over. And then eventually you'll you'll get to a solid spot. I mean, I find it really mesmerizing to watch you do all this. <laughs> I can just like <laughs> put that on Netflix instead of you know. <laughs> no, on YouTube, on Adobe Live. This is yeah, the yeah, only yeah. place where you can do this. Yeah. <laughs> buy now, buy now, buy now. Exactly. One time so, offer. <laughs> subscribe to subscribe to yeah. the channel. <laughs> Exactly. I'm just going to reuse that portion of the C there. That's another trick is if you can get away with duplicating shapes to save you time, go for it. Uh, yes, it's it what? Work efficiently, not work smarter, not harder. Exactly. That's exactly it. Wade is telling me nice save Isabel. <laughs> Thank you, Wade. <laughs> I want to think of how I can get closer to what I need the time we got. So these need to get a little more squiggled. So we have about like 20 minutes, 20, yeah. 22 minutes, depending. Let's go with that. Because I do want to get to the color. Um, mm -hmm. And that would be the, probably the last thing we get to. Um, here's another trick we can do. You ever use the simplify? You ever use the simplify tool? No, actually. I haven't had to. Do, 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 do. Where is it? Simple. Right there. Did that do anything? Okay. A little bit. See, this is like an instance where I would use a smoothing tool. Oh, yeah. We should try to do that. Uh, I don't even know where that's at. Is that? What, oh, what is uh, yeah. hold on. There yes. Smoothing tool? There you go. Usually my menu is on the left. So I was like, oh, there's no uh, menu. <laughs> Are, are you left-handed or? Uh, yes, I am actually. So I like, nice. I like, are you left-handed too? No, I'm right-handed. No. So that's why all my tools okay. are on the right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm left-handed. Yeah. I see how hard. like, so you need, you need to like follow the stroke. Um, there you go. See? Learning something new here. And you can also um change like your your path it could be super smooth or yeah. i think now it's it's like still kind of keeping that messiness so i think if you go back to the smooth tool you can double click and then it will give you that same um exactly accurate or mm. smooth it's 
see. Yeah, I kind of see what it's doing here. Yeah. Interesting. There we go. Hey, we learned something new. And there you go. You saw it here first, uh, <laughs> folks. <laughs> yeah. Tyler mentioned that he never used the smooth dude before. And, like, uh -huh. that's the first time. Yep. All started here. Look, we're all learning something. That's exactly that's the point of this, right? Mm hmm. Everyone has something to bring to the table, whether you're beginner or like about to retire mm -hmm. in your field. Everyone has something to say. Exactly. I'm going to another quick tip I have is shape builder tool. Sometimes whenever you're, oops, you're using this tool, you'll notice that your shapes might fall under or over other shapes and you don't know how to get to it afterwards. So what I like to do is whenever I'm doing the shape builder, I will select a color that I know I'm not using anywhere else. So let's make sure I don't have this red. So I'll use this magenta. And all right, so we have these colors. I'm going to select one, select same fill color. And now I have that color selected. I'm going to copy. I'm going to back up, like I said, way back when, because mm -hmm. I don't want all this excess stuff. And then I'm going to do command, paste into place. So now that's on the top. And now we have a little highlight there. Okay. All right, since we're getting close on time, I'm going to slowly. What's that? Like, yeah, like 20 minutes. It depends if you want to do a big uh, conclusion or not. <laughs> well, we'll see. The conclusion might be, is this, does this look like ice or not? <laughs> might be as far as we get. Uh, yeah. I'm definitely going to try. And this would be something fun for, for everyone who's tuning in. Um, if you follow my account or on social media, I'll probably finish this illustration, uh, this weekend or tonight and then you'll see where i'm able to take it because a little bit more time will go a long ways for something like this yes like there's a there's a lot of details so um chat moderators wait if you could add maybe tyler pate's uh, accounts into the chat so we can give it a follow. I must say it is a visual treat uh, to go <laughs> on Tyler's account. Um, that Krispy Kreme drawing that you did. Oh, oh yeah. It's so pretty. Thank you. Hey, the cool fun fact about that. If you're in Atlanta, Georgia, there is a Krispy Kreme that's that's there. Um, I'm not exactly sure exactly where in Atlanta, but I know it's one that is owned by Shaquille O'Neal, the basketball player. That is nice. That is painted in that Krispy Kreme. Oh no way! Yeah, I haven't seen it in person, but if if anyone's there, please send me a photo. <laughs> I've only seen like secondhand photos. Uh, okay, so we're nearly there. I think what I'm gonna do. By the way, I was using some clipping mask just now to create some little highlights. Going in with the blob tool again, yeah, adding those you, little stroke. Know it. Yeah. You know it. I would probably put a little bit more time into this if it was on my limited, unlimited amount of time, but we're limited now. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to get the idea across. Well, how's this? Maybe like, because I know you want to get to the recolor. Mm -hmm. So we can look at the recolor and then like, then we can finish um, the stream while you're still working on it. Yeah, let's let's try that. All right. So let's, let's 
group all of this. Well, that's a good idea to use the lasso tool to group. I've never, I've never done that before. I've never seen that before either. Uh, well, here's here's something that doesn't work quite well with it is if you have clipping mask, <laughs> it will mm. select. It won't select everything in that clipping mask. And there's, yeah, my lines go further out. So this is where it gets tricky. So what I would do is select the clipping mask. I'll group those. And how should I do this? Better yet, I could do... This is where the problem solving comes in. I'm going to lock that and then group this because I can see it easy, see the outline better. Dang it, doing the same thing again. All right, let's see. You can see the, the troubleshooting I'm doing. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> Designing is very oh, much out. a... <laughs> you're still good, like you're still good uh, on time, so. It's like, there's a couple of these little doodads that I get. So tell you what, while you do this, I want to mention that if you would like to feature a friend or even maybe yourself to be on Adobe Live, you can hit that guest recommendation button in the Behance chat and nominate people. So who knows, might, maybe you're going to be the next one who is featured. Ooh, big time. And yeah, it's, it's fun, right? It's, it's, a, it's, so, a fun, it's so much yeah. fun. I, Honestly, this is, you know, you don't get many opportunities to just have fun illustrating with some some awesome folks to talk to and have icy puns with. Um, exactly. Oh, shit. is it time for another pun? Because I have more. I think so. Yeah, okay. What you got? I'm so lucky I'm the frozen one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of being a guest on Adobe Live, that should, it should have been you who mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little subtle things like this really helps mm -hmm. sell the idea. Now even. Oh, Wade is not happy with me. <laughs> He's like, wow, dot, dot, dot. Sorry, Wade. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop. That was my last cheesy. I don't have any more after this. So. <laughs> well, since we're getting close to time, I mean, any other questions or other than puns in the chat? How, how are we looking? Oh, actually, Wade said that's uh, 21. So we still need to go. But Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Oof. But then what if we continue, then you'll be mad at me. So, <laughs> <laughs> And I don't want that. <laughs> Just ask for forgiveness. Yes. Please forgive me. Okay. I am going to duplicate all of this over. And then let's see what happens when we select everything. Good object. This is where I'll forget what I'm doing. Where is it? For the recolor? <laughs> yeah. You yeah. go to edit. There we go. Edit colors. And then edit Giant. colors. There we go. Perfect. Boom. Uh, you know what? Let's see what I'm always curious to what what these prompts look like. Cause it, it's just like completely different vibes every time. Wow. Look oh. That's actually like, cool. Yeah. Crazy it's like looking. Gold. Hey, that's actually a good idea. If we got yeah. gold, I wonder if, we, let's see, reset, gold. It would look like melted gold. Oh, yeah. Uh, look at oh, this. Dude, that's, this. That's cool. Look at that. Right, look at like, that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like butter or something. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. All right. So this is, this is what makes it really fun to explore. Um, let's see what other ones we get. It's funny how it changes the whole reading of the illustration. It does. See, and here's a, a like a tip with this, because I, I explored this a while back. Um, I think it was one of my la later streams. But as long as you get your color tones correct originally, that's that's the golden golden tip right there, because that's golden when tip. It, 
that's when it's going to start changing your darks to another dark rather than flipping it or inversing it which if you get your 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 tones wrong at the beginning it's mm -hmm. going to give you a it's going to generate a mess to be honest but if you can get your lights and darks and if you can build it in a gray scale that's that's probably more ideal because then you can just have the generator create something fun but since we had our lights and darks pretty close to being correct um it's going to generate some fun fun um prompts and, I, and this is the hardest part though is like i just keep it's like playing the lottery i just want to keep That's mashing it. generate yeah. and see if i get a better one <laughs> i don't know when to stop and honestly i'm curious to with what butter would look like because <laughs> it's still yellow and it might portray something still closer to gold oh that's i like cool. that yeah that's cool um, interesting it's interesting to that it understands the word butter because that's not necessarily a color mm -hmm. hmm. all right well i i think i could go forever with this can I'm we saying, do something like crazy oh sorry what, yeah me uh, too what you, what you got like, like, I don't know, like cottage cheese or something. Let's see if it understands that. <laughs> I don't even know. How do you, is that? See, yeah, cottage that's it. You got it. Cheese. cheese. It's probably going to understand cheese. Oh, oh no, it, it understood like it. Does that look like cottage cheese? Like cottage cheese is, um, uh, white, it's like it? white. Yeah, that's it. Um, it's kind of like clumpy. Um, so that's like that's that's very interesting i have not ventured with food item in the generative recolor beta so i'm learning I'm something gonna, new i'm gonna start over i don't know if it affects it once i click on one and and then generate so i'm gonna i started it over just to see what a fresh take would give us because i notice it is just slowly getting darker and darker mm. uh, which i don't want because all these back Ground colors are sick. Wow, that's cool. Oh, that's nice. Oh, I really like that. I think this one's um, the best. Wade is uh, telling us maybe ice and generate if we write that down. Like, what is it going to do? Ooh. See, I oh, want to see some nice. crazy stuff like this. Yes. This is cool. That's like ice if it was like on a bar with neons on top. <laughs> it's like a club. This is like a yeah. funny t-shirt, to be honest. Yeah. Ice cold. Or like a um, hat, too. Yeah. This this might actually make it to at least a sticker. I mean, this this is a fun one. Let's see. See, like, these start getting so dark, though. Um, I like that. I mean, it's so funny. It's close to what I already had. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was already in the, like, icy color palette. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, you know what? It's like um, oh, you remember? You, you know, like, like bubble a slush, gum, a slushy. Oh yes, this. Well, here I don't know if it's the same, but I don't think so. Um, but our brand here in Canada is called Slush Puppy. Oh yeah, we have those. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, They're, they would have them at the convenience stores. Oh my gosh, you know what I would do, and it's the best thing ever. And like, I would still do it as an adult, but I just don't What's consume that? slushies anymore. But you buy a a pack of skittles and you actually dump it in your slushy what? and you wait for a little bit and then your slushy tastes like skittles and it's amazing wow. yeah you i i gotta ask because i've i've thrown skittles in drinks before and they get really hard like yes rock. <laughs> yeah because it because they're cold yeah um yeah, you don't eat them at the end. Okay. <laughs> that's just <laughs> gonna break your jaw. But yeah, oh, that's that's like. You know what we could do too is if we we go to the recolor here, we can kind of adjust some of these darker colors manually. This is a fun. Aww. This is a fun feature. I feel like should be talked about more. I've done a couple um, tutorials on this, and. You can customize what the generative beta develops, which for anyone out there who says, oh, these, these colors are generic or it doesn't really pull what you want, you can customize it. 
That's I mean, it. there's, it's like, it's the perfect tool. I mean, let, let the prompts create the foundation for what you're looking for. And then, and then just edit it based off of your own color theory. Um, I think that's, that's the best for both worlds. I want to get rid of this. Oops. Oh, didn't mean to do that. I can't click on that without changing it. What happens if you click down here? We're just exploring a whole bunch of new stuff. And that's it. And you're also working on a Wacom, which I know sometimes like for clicking mm -hmm. and stuff like that, it can be a little finicky. Yeah, it, it definitely can when it's, when you're doing the subtle things, like usually on any sort of um, like slider or adjustment bar, it, it will do some weird stuff. That's why you have the glove too on. Here. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it, it helps. Wow, all these are blue now. I might have messed this up. We're exploring. <laughs> We're in uncharted <laughs> territory now. This is Explo where... Yeah, it's Go part ahead. of the process. It's part of the, You have to sometimes. Because sometimes it's like, oh, then one color might inspire you for something <laughs> else and something better. You, you never know. Again, if time allows. Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, I like that dark background, actually. But I like black background. I know it's basic, but I really like it. I think I, I want, ideally, a color, a dark color background, but not black. And then a really nice pop of color. Kind of like this, mm -hmm. but not not exactly that. Like it's missing contrast on that one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It feels, feels a little like uh inverse like muted mm -hmm. i mean this one stands out a lot mm -hmm. what do we think in the chat i mean can we ask let's see if um yeah for sure out of what, what? I mean, that's probably the best out of all we've 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 shown like what, what do we think what do we like this is your time to shine chat i think this is actually a really good contrast this is butter and as wade said earlier in the chat you butter believe it <laughs> Oh, we've lost it. <laughs> I like this it. One. <laughs> I like it. Keep them coming. All right. I'm just going to now. Mm, clever. Uh, Devlin is saying deep purple and yellow. Deep purple and yellow. Yeah, purple is the uh, complementary color to yellow. So it does go nicely together. You know what we could do is, since I like I like this gold, but I think this background could be. Mm hmm. Let's see, select, oh, fill color. I th think that should be everything. There's a stroke in there. Okay, I'm just going to try it. All right. This is probably going to select the wrong thing, but um, fill color. Let's see. Hmm. Cool. That's cool. Dark purple. What do you think, uh, Clever Devlin? Is this what you had in mind? Yeah, I think it's cool though. Yeah. It's it's an option. <laughs> it's an option. And and the cool thing too is that if you wanted to just redo the first letter, you could turn your your word into gold as well and keep oh, the yeah. same design yeah ice gold <laughs> ice gold ice gold i feel it that's that's fun well i think hey we actually covered it i mean we yeah we, we did to get into the color theory and a little bit of the the generative recolor uh you could easily spend a ton of time on that so clearly it's kind of a a fun thing to explore a bit but i'm gonna jump back over to the ice mm -hmm. How are we yeah on we, time? Still, oh, we still have close. like yeah, we could you could work on it for another three minutes and then we can start to, to wrap up like three, four minutes. Okay. So everyone, if you have some last minute questions for Tyler here, uh, this is your chance to do so. Yeah, this is this has been really fun. I, I like the way this turned out. I'm it's looking so, I, like really good. Yeah, 
thank yeah. you. I, I, I was, I was thinking about about it last night because I was I was creating the cold just just to prep for the stream, and uh, I was like, ah, oh, man, I couldn't get the couldn't get the look that I I thought I could envision. I was like, ah, eh, it just doesn't look right. Back to that whole play it cool, take a breather, <laughs> take a step away, go for a and walk. Then, yeah, exactly. And then it's like it finally is like, all right, I think I can make this work. And usually. Mm -hmm. Usually when that happens, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm okay. I got this. We have a great question from uh, Clever Devlin. Uh, will you do something with this uh, fridge magnet, perhaps? Fridge magnet? Oh, mm -hmm. like making? Oh, yeah. That, yeah. Be, that's a good idea. Um, as merch. Totally. I haven't explored magnets. I, I've made one magnet before, and it was just my pencil head character which is in, in my Creative Pain logo. Mm. Um, but I haven't done anything. That was like 2017, to be honest. I haven't I haven't made anything since. So that maybe this magnet. is your, your calling. <laughs> yeah. Stepping into the, the, the magnet game. Oh, that was needed. I needed that little contrast there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So... When do you know when it's done? I know this is a very tough question to ask. Uh, there's a few things. I, I'll, if it's a personal project, like I guess this, I can, I can get to a point where, obviously, I know I put way too much time in. I need to move on to something else, and that's usually a threshold in my head where it's like, all right, I, it looks good. I, I feel comfortable sharing it and, and talking or claiming it as my own, you know, <laughs> and, and don't feel like I feel ashamed of it. But if I can get to that point, it's like, all right, I think we're good to save it out and then um, call it final. But it's a slippery slope. There's some projects where I feel like I could still dive back into it if I opened the file because I've learned something new or like I would have done it differently now. And you know, when you start thinking about it, it's like, do I need to spend another hour on something that I did two years ago? Mm, you know, I think it's old. And I'm always mm. about something new. Like, let's get something new and under our belt. Um, but it, I don't know, it's a feeling. I guess that's more of the artistic approach. Or it's, yeah, it feels good. So trust your gut, essentially. Yeah, that's yeah. the instinct. But if, if you're building your instinct, I would say the the list of what you were trying to achieve at the beginning start checking them like mm -hmm. for this is it is it completed did we do every letter did we hit all the highlight points does it look like the mood board or inspiration that we originally pulled um and then the, you know it gets, gets back to that concept and usually that's like it's pretty evident right and mm -hmm. you, know, you could say like all right this this doesn't feel finished Speaking um, of, as we wrap up, maybe we mm -hmm. can zoom back out to see the final project and yeah. uh, you're back to your references. So just so we can see where, where you started from that sketch that you implemented. Yeah, let's let's check it out. All look right, at so that. Ice cold. We did that. And then look at my, my sketch. Not that far off, right? And That's again... You know, a sketch like this, this, I probably wouldn't show that to a client. I would probably make it a little bit more refined before I show a sketch. But the beauty about making passion projects is I'm the only one who has to read it. <laughs> so if I can look at it, I can understand where that needs to go. And this is exactly what I envision, right? It's like, all right, it's, it's going to be ice tight. That's so. it. You're your own client. So mm -hmm. <laughs> that's exactly look, it. Look at that. <laughs> So Tyler, where can we find you? Uh, well, you could find me on any of these platforms. Uh, I post a lot on, on Instagram, uh, TikTok. I do a lot of like tutorials and videos about Illustrator, Photoshop. Um, I'm on YouTube as well. Don't post there as much as I should, but I, I do have a channel and it's all under the creative pain. So pretty easy straightforward um definitely if you have any questions from the stream or a project reach out to me on instagram that's an easy one and um hopefully i can help you um it just takes time but yeah thanks for having me this is this is a fun one
It was so fun to watch you work. I mean, I don't think we've hit our target of 47 puns, but hopefully they will just continue rolling on that YouTube <laughs> like afterward I'm streaming. Uh, so stay tuned for a new episode of Adobe Firefly Weekly and interactive session using the new Adobe Firefly. So thank you so much, everyone. And until next time. <laughs>